Okay, before we get started on the yes. second episode, we have some exciting news. February 15th. You're like, what news? <laughs> <laughs> February 15th. I'm sorry. If you are local to the Twin Cities area, we are having a Galentine's Day event at the Lululemon store at the Mall of America. Yep. We will be breaking up with some shitty business concepts. So in the notes, we have information on how to get tickets. Yes. Buy your tickets now and join us February 15th. Bring your gal pals and we'll see you there live. Amazing. Yay. Hi, I'm Jordan. And I'm Sarah. And we're both successful serial entrepreneurs who believe the world is way better with more. More women-owned businesses, more wealth, more magic, and more champagne. But before we can add more, we need to return old business ideas that are taking up too much space in our lives. Enter The Refund, our content series for folks who are looking to return old storylines, concepts, and habits that no longer serve their life and business. Each episode, we're going to cover one topic, share three key takeaways, and we're going to receive a refund on what is no longer fitting the bill. Hashtag no receipts required. Listen and watch The Refund on YouTube and wherever you love to listen to podcasts. What are we talking about today? <laughs> I literally don't remember. <laughs> I blame this. That's you. Honestly, you could blame everything on that. <sighs> we we want to have a discussion about luck versus hard work mm. and returning the idea that it's one or the other because yes. it's definitely a harmony of both. But having just an open, honest conversation as women in business because we hear a lot like, oh, you're so lucky, Sarah. Oh, you're so lucky. Oh, my God. It's like like as if everything you've done has just been handed to you and you just picked it up and ran with it. I personally have a hard time with the l saying luck, I feel mm -hmm. so lucky, because I do feel lucky, but what I've been trying to really assess is, is it luck that I feel, or am I grateful? Mm -hmm. Thank and, you. And, and that's what it is for me. I don't feel lucky in that I'm releasing all ownness and ownership of what has Right. What I've created because I've participated in my right. business success, right? But there is a lot that has led me that had nothing to do with me mm -hmm. to this point. My point of privilege, how I was raised, how my parents supported me, literally where I was born. Like I didn't right. control any of those things. Like just, like, yeah. just being a person in the middle, upper middle class of America, there's privilege that comes along with that. That's totally. luck to me. Yeah. That's what I call luck. I can also account for my hard work mm -hmm. and say, I'm grateful for those things that I couldn't control. Right. And I busted my fucking ass. It's both. Right. It, there's a, I can't remember who said the quote. I really want to attribute it to Oprah because I think everything great that's been said is it's by Oprah, Oprah, where it's like luck is... It's like luck plus preparedness equals opportunity. Ooh. So to me, that's how I see it. It's like, yes. Luck plus preparedness. preparedness. Like being like you're being, you're like luck is on your side. You're also prepared because you were working so hard meets opportunity. Like that's kind of the secret to like how people find success is it's a mix of both. Totally. And I think you're right. I think the like luckiness is the self-awareness that there are just like some fixed circumstances, like where you were born, what your financial upbringing was, that to me is luck. But where I struggle is like, the luck is one piece. You could be the luckiest person in the world, but if you have no interest in like taking that as yes. an opportunity and like working for it, because you never know how lucky you're gonna stay. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. And so it's, you need, you can't have one without the other. Mm -hmm. Because we know, I mean, sadly, like, the concept of the American dream is that like you work super hard and then you get the house. You get the things. And sometimes there are people who are not set up for success and they work their whole life mm. super hard and then they just, they never hit they that window it. of opportunity. And I think, yeah, you can't have one without the other. Yeah, they're very interwoven and it's complicated. It's complicated too because I think, you know, when women are constantly, how do, I just feel like if, I feel like the conversation around women being successful and men being successful are two very different conversations and that totally. just frankly pisses me off. Mm -hmm. Like I think that's so annoying and I don't really, I personally couldn't tell you a, a time somebody said, he is so lucky. Never. I've never heard anyone mm -hmm. 
say, oh my gosh, he is so lucky. Mm -hmm. But I have heard it a million times. Oh my gosh, she is so lucky. Or even they've respond, well, I'm just really lucky. Like underscoring. Oh, right. a, a woman would say, I'm, I'm just, just so lucky. Right. I've never heard a man say, I'm so lucky. I mean, maybe I have, but. Not as frequent as women. Certainly right. not as frequently as a woman. Do you think that's because in general, I feel like as women, we have to make things look so effortless that we're not working really hard or that it's challenging. I think there's this idea where it's mm. like, make it look easy, do it all, don't act like it's hard, don't try and play the woe is me card. Um, it's easy to just say, well, I'm just super lucky. When instead, it's like they've probably worked very, very hard and broken a lot of barriers to get there. I think it's easy to say, well, I was just lucky. Like it, it allows them to not feel like they have to acknowledge their work. I mean, we know that in at least modern American society mm -hmm. that women in general, especially in the workforce, mm -hmm. are facing significantly more challenging ladder climbs, glass ceilings. Oh, yeah. Still, like we know we, we know that that's real. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes the conversation, especially in corporate America, again, this is well researched, we know this to be true, is that you know, these women aren't getting promoted because they're emotional or she's needy or, she or she's or she had a baby. So therefore she took time off and therefore didn't, in between that time someone took her place. Someone that took her place. Anything. Yeah. And so I think a couple of things are probably at play here that people way above our pay grade should really be assessing. But <laughs> that's the caveat in general. Right. But I would venture to guess a lot of this just really stems in it's new. It's newer for women to have in a corporate setting or even in a business sense, mm -hmm. mass success. It's just, there's not as many women in business. There's not as many women own businesses. There's not as yeah. women as many women at the C-suite. There's not as many women receiving investor funding. There's not as many women with invest mm -hmm. investment of capabilities to invest in other businesses. Right. These are all still highly male dominating, male dominated, subsets of the workforce yep. in small business and in corporate America. Right. And so I think we haven't as women probably even been able to flex or practice better language very often. Yep. And we're hearing I'm lucky. So we're saying I'm lucky instead of pausing and owning, owning, yes. right. wait a second. Right. I was a strategic planner i hired appropriately i took amazing risks i provided like, good services or products like there's that piece too like it wasn't luck that you came up with a product idea that was very successful i'm and you smart made, i'm I mean, capable right we just don't say those things I, normally i also think we forget too and i again we'll have to fact check this but like our parents grew up in a generation where I'm pretty sure women couldn't get, even get bank accounts in the 70s. Like we still have like a generation that's still alive where the idea of a woman even having any of her own financial ownership or autonomy existed, was even allowed. Credit was not available to a woman until the 80s okay, that's, without thought. a male co-signer. So it would right. be dad or husband. Brother. Would help you get a credit card or a mortgage. Right, so that just proves it right there that like the concept is still the new. 80s. Right. I was born in the 80s. <laughs> like, mom, could you not get a credit card before I was born? Like, right. Like, it's no, a she legitimately couldn't unless my dad was like, I can vouch for this one. What the fuck? That is <laughs> You're like, so... my dad? He's in charge? <laughs> like, that's just so enraging to me. Well, and it's just that's Which humbling. Is, yeah. Let's be very clear too. That was just all power play. Mm -hmm. That was all power play. That had nothing to do about money. That had everything to do with a wife having to ask her husband or a daughter having to ask her dad mm -hmm. or an uncle or some male, can I spend this money? Yep. So of course there's money trauma mm -hmm. in many generations and we're still feeling it because yep. our moms had a really fucked up situation where they couldn't just go and buy what they wanted. Right. They had to ask permission. Well, and they didn't have the what? literacy, right, either. There was no, we were not taught to have the literacy. No. And even, there's so or the many. language, right. or none of it. And there's so, there's so many books about like the Man, family. Man, this makes me mad. Right? I'm getting fired up. I'm like, <laughs> right, and there's a lot of. To get on a soapbox. <laughs> And there's a lot of books written about like the family money and usually the father knew where the family money was and it was a secret and really 
women wouldn't know where their money was until their spouse died or they got divorced and they were financially ruined. But I think like that aside- Which is a common story. Oh, absolutely, like that to this day. But I think what's so interesting about that too, back to like luck versus hard work is like, we are a generation that's transforming and changing. And I don't think we're necessarily healing that trauma, but like, that's why we're feeling it just at full force because we're, we're a new generation that's completely changing the playbook of what does it mean to be born into a family where you can have a credit card and you can open up a bit. Like, it's not necessarily easier to start a business as a woman, it's more accessible. So therefore that's accessible. that's considered lucky. I would say the previous generation would say we're lucky or maybe even consider us entitled because they, there they was, didn't have that. Right, there was way more restrictions. But again, the difference is, is we're not just sitting around opening up bank accounts willy nilly. Like we're also working really hard because we have a different set of challenges than our you know parents did and grandparents did two generations before. So you can't have one without the other to be successful. And I, I like that this is where you can say, like, yes, yeah, circumstantially, it is lucky that I was born in 86 at the tail end. Well, you didn't choose drama. that. <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. Right? I wasn't like, hey, this is when I, I don't have like a religious belief system that assigns that. they were like, that. Right, right here, 86, I, I, she's exactly. getting a bank exactly. account. I just <laughs> happened to be here in 1986. That's my belief system. Yeah. And so is that anything I controlled? No, it was nothing I controlled. Is that luck? Sure, you could call that luck. And instead of just stopping there, I can mm-hmm. say, damn, I am so grateful that previous generations yes. were able to combat this sexist bullshit mm-hmm. that has absolutely informed and propelled my potential yep. and what I wanted to do with it. Now, right. I ran with that. Mm-hmm. I thought, oh, hell yes, I can open up my own credit card. And I opened up a credit card right. that I put all of my expenses on. I pay my team via and I fly for free because I have a credit card that gets me miles and points. Right. Just connecting all like, the dots. That is How can we luck. fly for free? That's strategy <laughs> with. <laughs> right. With the luck. Right. Like, right. I think that's a silly but realistic example of something that I had nothing to do in the change of. I'm benefiting from, yep. but I'm also a smart person. I'm using it as an opportunity. I'm using it as an opportunity. So there is the like luck plus the preparedness and information to take advantage of the opportunity. But then also what, what we're trying to do too is inform future generations who are going to look lucky to us in some circumstances, but they also have to work really hard and they're going to have a different set of challenges. I think we need to let go of the like generational what's lucky and what's not because it's going to be different for every generation because We've lived through multiple economic downturns, multiple catastrophic historical events that has been considered challenging, but I think it makes us better business leaders. But ultimately we've worked around it. We've run businesses during a pandemic. Yeah. Did our did how many generations did that? And right. like so I graduated me, it, in a recession. There mm-hmm. were no jobs. Yeah. I figured that out somehow. Yeah. And actually that, that's a good segue. I'd like to hear like what what would be a scenario or a story where you feel like maybe it's perceived as luck and then how did you take that opportunity and mm. work through it to like build an opportunity? I feel like we actually talked about this where you came out of school with no debt. Like that's, that's huge. I was very lucky. Yeah. You're so lucky. I'm so lucky <laughs> that my parents paid for most mm-hmm. of my formal education yep. and I went to two expensive out-of-state programs two schools. Mm-hmm. I transferred from the Art Institute in Chicago and oh, I didn't know moved. That. Yeah. And actually it was the the there it's it's the it's like the AI mm-hmm. chapter, the Illinois in, Institute of in Art. In Chicago. Okay, in I Chicago. Not those. like the Art Institute. Okay. It's different in Chicago. Yeah. We have we have an art institute here in Minneapolis. That's what I that thought. school okay. in Chicago and I mean even that, even that I picked Chicago, I mean I could have done that same program in Minneapolis. Mm-hmm. I'm from the South Suburbs. But wanted to go to the big city. I wanted to go to the big city and my parents supported me in that and they paid for a vast majority of that. And then I transferred out of state to Arizona State University and they paid for a vast majority of that. I had a very small student loan, like a federal loan that Mm -hmm. my dad helped coordinate me taking out. And so I knew throughout college, and mind you, I still worked throughout college. Mm -hmm. Um, I always had a job when I was also in school and I, you know, savings was a big part of my financial story upbringing. Like, Mm -hmm pay yourself first, 
not in the form of a bag, Sarah. Pay yourself first in the form of saving for retirement, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> putting together liquid savings. So that was always really drilled into me. And yeah. so working was something that was really important to me so that I could pay for things that I wanted to pay for that were out of the realm of what my parents would support, but that I also was creating a savings account. And so I graduated knowing that that was not normal. I graduated in 2009. Mm -hmm most of my friends had student debt that they were responsible of taking care of. And so that gift that my parents gave me alleviated a ton of pressure mm -hmm. around like, what do I do next? What's next for me? Yeah. Um, I didn't have to worry about a lot of things that my friends had to worry about. I recognize that as privilege and sheer luck. I just so happened to be born into a family that financially right. could support me going and getting an education. But you know what I, what's so fascinating to me about that is like there's so many layers to that that like yes is luck but also like your parents instilled this idea of like this is a privilege. We worked really hard to pay for you to go to college. So similar to maybe if your kids go to college like that's so key and then they also were like you're not just going to go fuck off in college. Like I knew a lot of those people because i when I went to the Big Ten school here, like fucked up, like just totally fucked off. Parents would write them a check for their rent. I lived with somebody that like she just had her parents checkbook. She didn't even graduate. And I just remember feeling so upset because it's like you were busting your ass. Oh, yeah. I mean, I come from a big Sicilian Italian family. To th so I was in high school when the market crashed. And up until me, a lot of my siblings got support with college funds. I got nothing. So my parents were like, I'm sorry. I mean, our house got foreclosed down. We became a statistic that year. And instead of blaming my parents, I was like, OK, I guess I'm just going to go to community college. So I went to community college for uh, two years, full time student. I worked seven days a week. I managed a restaurant. So Thursday through Sunday, I would close a restaurant, work until midnight. And then Monday through Wednesday, I worked at Hot Mama, which is now oh, yeah, Ever Eve. Now Ever Eve. I was on the closing shift. I would work from like four to ten, and Maybe then they can dress us. <laughs> Honestly, I actually met uh, Megan Tampty, and I told her I worked at the Oprah store when it was Hot Mama. I still have some of their clothes. That's how good their product is. Uh, really good jeans. But and then Monday through Friday, I was five classes. I would max out my classwork a semester. I max out my workload too. I was like. And I was able to pay off those first two years by myself. And at first I felt really bad because all my friends went to really amazing schools. But instead, like, I got to study abroad and go to Costa Rica. I paid for that. I paid for my first two years. And then I could I'm transfer. So you. Yeah, it was a really, I think it was a humbling experience working in the service industry. will build some thick skin. Totally. Sales. I loved it. It was fun, but I didn't want to do it forever. And then I transferred to the U, but I didn't get any financial support. Like I took out fifty, sixty thousand dollars worth of debt because to me, like knowledge is freedom. It was like I wanted to move. I wanted to and I took that risk and I'm gonna pay off my student debt this year, which is great because I like Huge. similar good for si you. Similar to you. Like I still worked two jobs when I moved here and like and I didn't have a network, but like again. That didn't stop me. I didn't think I was lucky in that scenario, but I, that's where I kind of flipped the coin where I was like, okay, I'm going to work really, really, really hard until I find the right opportunity. Yeah. Like I'm going to get myself in front of an opportunity and I'm just not going to wait around for someone to say, oh, here's money to pay off your student debt. Like, And set yourself up for success. You knew right. that that's what, what was important. Well, yeah. And then if I think about it, like that led me to you know, a career in marketing. And that's how I found my venture capital partners. Like I would have never found them if I didn't like work and struggle and like be broke. Like I was broke for a long time. Like I really, even when I was running Mend, I still had a mindset like I have to work so hard and running my business is what really changed that for me. But I didn't feel lucky ever. Mm. I felt until I started to see the fruits of my labor show up in opportunities. And now I think it's both. Like, I think that right. it's evolved into a balance of both. And you need a little bit of both. It's not just working hard. It's you have to be in the right place at the right time and putting yourself out there. That's what kind of irks me. And I will own when Will and I left our corporate careers and traveled, mm -hmm. the conversation was, you're, to, to me, at least, I don't know what Will heard. He probably didn't hear you. So lucky. <laughs> I'm just say. I heard nonstop. You're so lucky. You're so lucky. Oh, You're so, so lucky. Oh, so annoying. And I was so 
pissed by that sentiment. Yeah, it's condescending. And I remember talking to Will about it in mm-hmm. whatever developing country we were in. And I kind of was snobby about it. Mm-hmm. I was a little, I was very annoyed. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I'm not lucky. I busted my ass in school. I worked very hard yeah. in school. You didn't take a, it for granted. And A wasn't enough for me. Yeah. I, you know, there were many nights where I'd be, you know, at a party, like my husband's house was where the party was happening. And I'd be like at the kitchen counter working on homework or mm-hmm. doing a project or working on, you know, something design school related. And then I'd bop upstairs and say, hey, and like have a couple sips of beer. And then I'd go oh, back downstairs shot. and I'd keep working. Like hard work was instilled in me growing yeah. up, just like you said. That's an ethic thing. Go, yeah. go to get a four-year degree was instilled in me. Yeah. That was not of my own, you know, ideation. Like yeah. that was instilled in me. But I, I just kept thinking, like, I busted my ass. I got great grades in school. Mm-hmm. I got a good job. I negotiated. I asked for more money or I, I positioned myself right. to be promoted. I made a lot of money. I saved every penny for two years. That is how I'm getting to do this trip. And it took me kind of a long time mm-hmm. to realize that the pendulum swing of declining the notion that I'm lucky mm-hmm. isn't just, well, I fucking worked hard. I was right. I was forgetting the gratitude part. For sure. I was forget, I needed to like land somewhere in the middle and I'm seeing that a lot, mm-hmm. especially on social media and especially in, you know, a very like strong feminist voice standpoint mm-hmm. where women are screaming, I'm not fucking lucky, I've worked hard. And that's, I think, turning people away <laughs> right. from a reality of let's honor and recognize privilege right. because that is there. Right. And it's all so hard. This is just the concept of multiple truths. For whatever reason, we think everything is black and white. We it's can't not. say space for this two is truths. A shade. This is a shade of gray. It's a shade of gray. So for, for me, it's I have luck and privilege. That is true. And I work hard. And so I just, I, I am remind myself when somebody says you're so lucky or when Mm -hmm. I want to say I'm so lucky, I'm trying to rebrand that as I'm grateful for what's happening over here, what has happened, what has out of my control led me to where I am. Mm -hmm. And I really do work very hard to accomplish my goals. I'm driven and I'm focused. Well, you're not, yeah, you're not going to be a martyr and then burn yourself out because that's, that's the other side of it. It's like, you're lucky and you're taking advantage of it. And then you're just pretending that you're grinding super hard and then you have the other side, which is like hustle culture, which is saying like work until you're dead, kill yourself and then Not be a martyr if nothing if nothing good happens to you. And it's like, yeah, finding that balance. And it's funny how like our stories are so different, but we've both landed as business it owners is, it is who, who have worked really hard, but have also been given opportunities that are a result of being, you know, white women growing up in middle class, upper middle class America. So it's like. You can't have one without the other. And acknowledgement is the biggest piece. And like, again, I, I know we keep saying it, but it's like, it, you can't have one without the other. You could be really lucky, have all the money in the world, but if you have no interest in taking that and making an opportunity out of right. it, no one gives a shit. But if you want to work really hard and blame the world for not getting anywhere, that's not going to get you. There's no opportunity there if you burn yourself right. into the ground and have no boundaries. I think in general, women lean on this I'm so lucky. So mm-hmm. I I think what I what I really want to have come out of this episode yeah. is an understanding that we can own our successes yes. and and own the hard work and own our expertise as women in business, yeah. as women in the corporate workspace and be grateful for the Absolutely. things that brought us there because again there's statistics around this. Men will ask for a job or go for a promotion that they are like hyper not qualified for. Um, yeah, they're they're under qualified. They're under qualified. They'll apply every time. <laughs> Women, time and time again, under, do not. Every time they say, "I'm not ready," they'll have talks with their managers about, mm-hmm. or their you know business coaches about, how can I get a little bit more you know experience before I need I to be certified. For this job. I need for to be certified. Mm-hmm. I need to go get this. I need to go get that. Women tend to hold themselves back on that mm-hmm. front, and again, I think it's because of generations of yep. bullshit, which yep. we all know, but. What I really hope we can remind ourselves of is the fucking men are going for it. So we need to go for it, too. 
And we're yes. not just don't rest on the concept that it's just I'm so lucky. Like fucking own your shit. You're amazing. Right. And be grateful. Like and you can't blame. Like again, it's so smart to be like, you know what? I'm grateful that I was able to be out of school with no debt. Therefore, I was able to save more and do X, Y, and Z. And for me, like. I'm not going to blame my parents for not being able to pay my college fund. And actually, I think I might have been an entitled little shit if my parents just kept throwing money at me. But you have that, older siblings that yeah. prove it. <laughs> I mean, but to me, I value my education so much more. I took college so seriously. Yeah. I mean, I would party and then I would get up and go to my 8 a.m. class because oh. in my mind, that was a $175 sociology class, marketing class. Who signs up for 8 a.m. classes? Oh, I, I do. did. I, I did do. every time. Oh, I did too because then I'd be home early and I could nap. And <laughs> I didn't and, nap. I yeah. just probably worked <laughs> and, and then drank. <laughs> so it's like, that to me is balance. It's yeah. like, again, I'm not going to blame. It was circumstantial. That yeah. was, I was unlucky. But again, I'm not going to blame myself. Like, I actually think it was a positive thing. Yeah. Okay. What are our three takeaways from returning the idea of being lucky. I think it's rebranding it as being grateful. I think that's, I think that's number one. one. I think we rebrand luck yes. as gratitude. I feel grateful for the circumstances yes. that have gotten me to this point. And magical things happen when you operate in a space of gratitude and abundance. We are, ma I'm a manifester. Yeah. We've got crystals all around us right now. I don't know if they're in shot or not, but we've, we're, we've got them around yes. us, right? It, a manifestation manifestation practice gratitude will bring good things to you yes so it's just a good practice in general i would say the second thing is can't have one without the other one extreme or the other isn't going to help you find balance try and try and have them live together as a Both relationship and. yeah they're a relationship and. and when something good happens celebrate it and don't just try and be like well it was the moon like it might have partially in the moon but it was also because you emailed and called new leads five times a day yeah so it's a it's a balance between the two the last for me is own and proclaim the hard work you have put into Amen. creating your circumstances and building your business yes. and closing those clients. You did that. You did that. That's so fucking cool. Yes. You met your revenue goals. You met you your profitability it. metrics. You met your squishy metrics. We yes. talked about squishy metrics. You did that. That was you. Yes. Own that. Be proud of that. Shout that from the rooftops. Yes. That's really important to celebrate. That's not just luck. Correct. That's you busting your fucking ass. And you should be really proud of that. I'm proud of that. I am. And you know what? That's a future merch idea. You did this. <gasps> I love that. You, did, you this. did this. We're just reminding you. You did it. You did this. Cheers to you. Okay. Follow us. Subscribe on all the platforms. Yes. We're on every pod po podcast platform. You can watch us on Spotify and on YouTube. Yes. Follow Please us on watch Instagram. Us. What are the big things that we need their help on? Like commenting on Instagram yes. is big when you see an episode drop. Sub actually truly subscribing. Don't just like watch that, or listen. Yeah. Like actually subscribing is that really helps. helpful. That helps. Then you're the first one to know when there's a new epi live. Yes. And That's rating. That's a big one. Yes. Rating us on these platforms Tell us is really important. what you important, like, what so. you don't like, and we'll stop. Maybe. I don't know if we're ever going to stop. <laughs> actually, probably not. Cheers to you. Cheers. You're amazing. You did this. You did this.